Alright, so uh, doing oil change on my uh, Kohler 14 kilowatt uh, home backup generator here. Uh, so it's not too difficult. You take these, uh, these side panels off here, just one on each side, this side here, and this side over here. And they literally just, you flip this lid up and they just lift right straight up. They come right out. You set them off to the side. This guy here, the big front panel, he's got uh, a couple little latches there. You just pull those up and you kind of lift on the, on the panel and it kind of lifts just straight up and uh, gets out of the way. So then you can access everything pretty good. Um, so then what you want to do is you want to kill the power to the generator. So I turn mine off. So that way, like if the power decides to cut out, it doesn't kick on while I'm draining the oil. <laughs> Because that would suck, right? So uh, you want to turn that off. And uh, I think in the instructions it tells you to take the uh, negative terminal uh, cable off the, the battery there. And a couple other things. I I would recommend doing it. I didn't do it, so but that's what it says to do. Um, so then what what this generator takes is five W thirty synthetic oil. They recommend full synthetic. Not the old school uh, conventional stuff. So I got a couple quarts. It holds, I think, 1.8 quarts. So I got two quarts um, for that. And then I got a new oil filter. I put that on already. New Kohler. Here's the old one. You just need an oil filter wrench. Uh, this one actually wasn't on that tight. So I actually had a couple drops of oil under it. Uh, so I tightened mine up a little bit more and I put it on. But anyway, what you want to do is kill the power to it, and then you want to, uh, there's this drain line here. You can see right here, and there's like a little valve. So you want to get like an oil pan here, and uh, get that ready. Open it up, and oil will start to drain out. You can see it's already filled up quite a bit. It's pretty slow, it takes a while. So uh, you let that go, I let that drain for a little bit, and then what I did is uh, I changed the oil filter. What I recommend, because if you look at how this is set up, you're gonna open this thing up and look what's gonna happen. Oil goes all over the place, right? That would suck. So what I would recommend, just cut like a little piece of cardboard here. That's what I did. You just jam it up under there, right up against the engine, and then have it route right down into your oil pan. Boom, no more problem, right? No mess. So then you get to all the oil, it goes right into here, and you don't got a big old mess all over your engine, and down here you gotta clean up. So you just, I just found some old box from Amazon, cut it up utility knife so then you want to put the new new filter on the new filter it's a uh, it's a Kohler 120501 um, what what I what I do I always put a little bit of oil in there I don't fill it up but I put some oil in there so there's something in there when it turns on and then uh, you always want to put like a little thin layer of oil right on the, the rubber uh, o-ring gasket there I do that on all my engines and stuff, you know. It just seems like the right thing to do, right? So that way it's easy to turn off later. Uh, it doesn't get stuck and fall apart. So then you just thread it back on. Thread this right back on real easy. Uh, and then I have an oil filter wrench here, like I said. I just kind of tighten it hand tight and I did a little snug with the wrench. Make sure that's on. And uh, that's it. So I'm just letting the oil drain. So I'm waiting for that to go. Uh, you can add oil right here or here. It's two spots. Get yourself a funnel. Take that little cap off. It's pretty self-explanatory. Right? It's got the oil can there. You dump your oil in there. Your dipstick's right here. Pulls right out. So you want to check it. You can see there's not much showing now because it's almost out. Um, like I said, it holds 1.8 quarts. It's probably likely you're going to have some oil still in there because, you know, it's it's kind of hard to get this at an angle where you can get, get it fully out. But uh, So I would fill up, i dump a full quart in there at least, and then maybe a little bit more in the second one. And then I would stop and then check it because you don't want to overfill it. <clears throat> so maybe do a quart and a half, then check it, let it settle and check, and then... Uh, fire it up and then check it again. You can always add a little bit more. But uh, that's that. 
And then I guess so once this is done draining and you add your oil, you check it, everything looks good. You'd want to turn this back on to auto if you're going to just leave it. But what I'm going to do is just check it for leaks. I'm going to hit run over here. There's my finger. There it is. <laughs> so hit run. And that'll turn it on. It'll make it run. It won't connect to the house with the power or anything, but it'll just run on its own. I'll let it run for a few minutes. Uh, with all these panels off, I can check for leaks and stuff. And if everything looks good, then uh, I'll kill it again. And then uh, I'll check the oil one more time. And if I need any, I'll add it. It should be over full, I guess if it is, and I can, you can always drain some out again since you got everything here. Um, and then that's it. So that's the oil change. So you get fresh oil and a uh, new oil filter, full synthetic. And like I said, uh, you know, this one here, I've got almost 77 hours of runtime. I just got this thing installed in early June or mid June, and it's like mid late August right now. So it's only been two months, and we've already used it 77 hours. So I don't know, a lot of people may go a real long time before they hit that, but they recommend changing the oil every uh, 100 hours or I think once a year. So most people are probably going to do it once a year. But I figured if I get one more outage, I'm going to hit 100 and maybe even go over because we get a lot of extended outages out here in the country. Uh, we've, had, we've had several that lasted five to six days in a row. So that's why we got this thing because we used to mess around with a little portable generator. And I got tired of that crap. Firing it up, getting gas, running extension cords and all that crap. So the sucker wasn't cheap. I think we paid around 11000 for it. It's a lot of money. But man, is it worth it when you get a power on. It just kicks right on in a few seconds and then you're set. Got this big ass uh, automatic transfer switch in here. Runs into your, uh, your meter. They came and did all this stuff. I got the first clue on that. And ours runs off a of natural gas. You can see it runs, there's a the natural gas line. Uh, they can also run a propane. I think they have a little bit more of an output with propane. Uh, natural gas, I think it's reduced to 12 or 13 kilowatt, not 14. But it's enough to power our whole home. Uh, we just had to have a load shed on the uh, electric water here. That's what we, we got when we moved in. That's what the guy put in before us. So if I replace it, I'll do a, a natural gas uh, heater. And I won't have to worry about that. But anyway, I don't want to ramble too much, but that's how you change the oil. Again, this is a uh, <clears throat> 14 kilowatt Kohler generator. Just got installed June of 2023, so it's pretty new. Uh, things great. Highly recommend it if you get a lot of outages and stuff. Uh, it really takes away uh, a lot of worries when you're on vacation or even just when you're home. You've got to screw out the generator anymore. So that's basically it. So just gonna keep letting it drain and then I'll check it and that'll be it. So hope this video helps. Uh, I just recently hit a thousand subscribers. I'm surprised that many people even watch the, my videos. <laughs> Usually they're car videos or dirt bikes or tractors or something with an engine. This has an engine, so I thought, what the hell, I'll do a video on this. So hopefully this helps if you have a generator. Uh, so there you go. See you guys later, bye.